Capturing and creating a wedding film is already hard enough on its own, but to shoot a wedding film by yourself without a second shooter is honestly one of the most daunting tasks a videographer could face. My name is David Zhao, and today we're gonna to be talking about 10 tips you should know if you're planning on shooting a wedding solo. So you don't have a second shooter. Well, first let's talk about what having a second shooter really provides you. Most of the time, the second shooter isn't too involved in your planning process and doesn't really know how exactly your final edit's going to look. More often than not, your second shooter is there to one, capture the complementary angles of your shots. For example, if you're shooting the ceremony, you might be covering the bride while they cover the groom. And two, the second shooter is there to capture more footage for you to fall back on. So when you're in the cutting room, there's more footage to work with in case your original shots didn't work out as planned. When you don't have a second shooter, well, things are gonna have to be a little more meticulous, a little more planned, and time is even more important than it already is. So you're shooting a wedding film by yourself. Here are 10 tips you should know. One, make a list of shots you'll need. Without a second shooter to cover the shots that you might not have thought of during the day of, you'll need to make sure you get all the shots you need to put together a stunning wedding film. Bonus points if you have the highlight song pre-picked so that you can start listening to it and get a feel for the pacing. This will help you mentally plan a pre-visualization of your project before you even get to the big day. Two, scout the location during the rehearsal day. If the location is far and you won't be in attendance for the rehearsal day, make sure to get photos of the venue from either the bridal party, the wedding planner, or the day of coordinator. Ideally, you want to get an understanding of the size of the place so you can navigate it efficiently later and to understand the lighting the location has to offer. You're gonna to wanna to see if you're gonna need additional lights and or what the white balance is gonna be you know, so you can expect it. All things important to mentally prepare for before you get to the big day. Three, make sure to reach out to the DJ and photographer. Make sure you have what you need to record the audio needed for your video. Ask the DJ if they're cool with and have the outputs you need to record the microphone audio. Otherwise, you'll have to improvise on how you can get good audio of the ceremony, toasts, etc. By the way, if you can't get access to the DJ soundboard, you can try this method that Jason Vong used. I personally don't like using this method for things like bridal party introductions because the music in the background will also be audible as well, but it's much better than relying on your on-camera microphone. Also, make sure to reach out and introduce yourself to the photographer. You'll want to work together nicely on the day of and make sure not to get in each other's ways. For some shots, you might need the bride and groom to do things twice so that both of you can get the shots you need. For example, the sparkler send off is usually one of the things we always have to do twice because it looks best front on with a wide angled lens so you can really only capture it, you know, photographer first or videographer first and vice versa. Four, get to know the client. Take the guesswork out of what shots you think they'll like and what they really want you to capture. Ask them whether they want this to be something to share on social media or if it's just something they're gonna keep for themselves. Also, whether they want the focus on just the bride and groom or also heavily on the wedding party. Figure out if there are important must-have shots of family members that they want in the film, like the parents or grandparents. This way, you can focus on what's important and not to waste time on shots that won't make it into the final cut anyways. Five, show up 30 to 60 minutes early on the big wedding day. Plan with a coordinator and let them know you'd like to show up early. This way you can have all your gear set up, gives you a minute to review your shot list and your plan of action for the big day. This will help take some of the nerves out. Six, prepare your gear the night before. Charge your batteries, clear your storage media, have your camera settings ready, like picture profiles and recording settings. If you did get a chance to visit the venue prior to the wedding day, you could set your custom white balance while you're there, so that when you're shooting, you can just switch between your custom white balance settings. This will save you time from dialing it in each time you go from indoors to outdoors or from room to room. Seven, speaking of gear, you're gonna need two cameras. Three would be even better. First, I'll tell you about the setup I use for my shoot. I have the FS5 with a 24 to 70 millimeter GM. That was on a tripod basically for half the time and it was there to capture second angle of things like the ceremony and the first look. Side note, many clients want the full recording of the ceremony and depending on the type of service, 
It could be a service that lasts 40 minutes to an hour. In those situations, you'd really like to have a camera that doesn't have a 30 minute record limit, hence the FS5. Then my second camera, I had the a7 III with a 24 millimeter GM on the Zion Weeble Lab. Just reviewed that actually, you should definitely check that out. This was the camera I used for most of the shots with movement. I used it for the couple's getaway shots, establishing shots, detail shots, the dances, the reception, and the sparkler send-off. And finally, for my third camera, I had the A6500 with my 85mm GM on a monopod. This was my close-up camera. This was how I got those close-up shots during the prep, ceremony, and reception. But, quick note, this is not the ideal close-up setup. The 85 GM on a crop sensor A6500 meant that this was a really tight shot. Combined with the fact that I was only stabilizing on a monopod meant that I had to try really hard to not introduce any jitters into the shots. Now, theoretically, you could shoot a wedding by yourself with just two cameras, especially if you don't exceed the 30 minute record limit. Just have yourself a wide angle setup on a gimbal or really any stabilized setup and put the zoom lens setup on a quick release plate and swap it between a tripod and a monopod. With that, you'd end up getting the same result. Eight, more important than ever, you need to shoot for the edit. You don't have the luxury of over recording a single angle because you'll need a variety of angles and shots to cut together an interesting and dynamic final product. This means you have to balance between spending time on a single composition, you know, waiting for a good moment, but also moving around to capture multiple angles so you have content to cut between. Nine, try to shoot in 60 FPS, 120 FPS for the majority of the day. Knowing that you'll have less footage captured than with two videographers present, you'll want to be able to stretch out those key moments you captured. Even if you don't want to riddle your video with a ton of slow motion, it would be extremely beneficial to have the ability to do so. And 10, strategically plan your use of 4K footage. If you can shoot in 4K, try to use it on your stationary camera. In my case, I had the FS5 on a tripod for most of the day, and there really isn't much excitement in having a stationary slow motion footage. So instead, if that's the case, set the camera to shoot in 4K 24 frames per second and give yourself one, higher quality footage because it has more bitrate throughput, and two, the ability to crop in and recompose. For example, you could cut from a cropped in wide angle FS5 shot into a close up on, of the groom on the A6500 to a reverse close up of the bride on the A6500 back to an uncropped wide angle on the FS5 shot, giving you the illusion of a four angle coverage despite the fact that it's just you running around in the background trying to get everything done as a one-man band. If you couldn't tell, all of these tips dealt with making your shooting day as efficient as possible and cutting down as much transition time as possible. Whether that's multiple camera setups or a full shot list, shooting a wedding highlight film solo is 100% doable. Shoot for the edit, keep calm, and stay focused. Having a second shooter is great for your sanity, but if you were insane enough to book a wedding film job without a second shooter, you'll be able to pull it off if you plan accordingly. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video and found the advice helpful, go ahead and leave a like and smack that subscribe button. Drop a comment down below. I want to know what other tips or tricks do you have that can help you or anybody else maximize their efficiency on a shoot? Whether it's gear or technique, share it down below and we can all learn a thing or two. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you next time.